Dr. Kristen Finn, Vet was for at Medicine, Integrative Veterinary Services, and this is my pal Bart. We're going to demonstrate passive range of motion, which is an excellent way to improve their spinal mobility and reduce pain and create um, excellent relaxation. So passive range of motion by definition is passive. We need to be gentle. We're not trying to push them to a certain stretch and we need to be relaxed and that helps the dog relax. And we need to remember to breathe. Good boy. So I'm just, and I have never done this on Bart before. So this is a real life situation. So if Bart is wiggly, that's, that's how it goes. And that's how probably it would go for some of you. So I'm just starting by doing some rubbing and stroking and good boy Bart and I know Bart so he's been here before and he's often had the benefit of feeling better so I generally lay so that I'm perpendicular to their body and behind their spine sometimes I'm on the floor and um, they're, they're down in front of my lap good boy Bart okay so let's start with you on your side. Good boy. <laughs> oh, you're a weekly guy, Bart. There we go. And his mom is right over there, so he's pretty focused on, on her. All right, Bart. Let's get you on your side. I know you can do it without wiggling off the table. There we go. This is going to be really nice for you. Oh, good boy. So the most important thing is to create relaxation. And every dog loves to be rubbed. And moving this skin and, and hair around is moving their fascia around. And the fascia surrounds the muscles and the bones. And so you're really creating deep relaxation. This is called skin mobilization. And this is something that's excellent to do on their whole body anytime. Okay, Bart. So we're gonna work on his front limbs first and then his hind limbs. Okay. We're relaxing him. So the three joints of the front limb are the shoulder, which is hard to make out in a long haired hair dog the elbow, which you can see we flex there, it flexes at a right angle, and the carpus, which this carpus would be like our wrist. So to start the passive range of motion, we, I put one hand at the elbow and the other hand opposing at the carpus. I'm not grabbing around because um, you never want to pull, you just want to push. Nobody likes to be pulled. So I'm just having the limb out straight. Then I'm gonna slide my hand down towards his toes and then push everything up to create flexion of all three joints, the elbow, the carpus, and the shoulder. And then wait about eight seconds or so and then stretch out. Good boy, Bart. And I just stretch out by posing my hands, one at the elbow and one at the carpus. And then we're gonna pendulum forward, staying in the same plane of the body so we don't want to be up or down or rotated. Just swinging like a pendulum, slowly forward. And Bart, we identified earlier, was like many corgis, good, good boy, tight in his triceps. So it was preventing him from having um, very uh, ideal extension forward. But as he's relaxing, this is able to come forward. Good boy. And then just sit with it and breathe. And then come back to the center. And again, I'm pushing, never pulling. And then this creates shoulder flexion and extension of all the muscles in the neck. Good boy. And then back to center. 
Okay, so now we're going to go to the hind limbs. And a lesson that I'm having trouble learning is never say that release word, whether you're talking to yourself or not. The dog knows. Okay, part. <laughs> Did it again. So the three main joints of the hind limb are the tarsus or the ankle. That's the tarsus, flex, extending and flexing. The stifle or the knee. And the hip, which would be up here. So we're going to get his legs straight, encourage straightness, by pushing on his stifle, not pulling on anything. And then I will push on his tarsus, good boy, there you go, to straighten the leg. Now corgis have very tight hamstrings and gastrocs and gracilis, so straightening a corgi's leg um, it can be challenging, so you just have to sit with it. Don't forget to breathe. Good boy. And it feels really good once they stretch out. It doesn't feel good if you're forcing it or trying to hurry. Good friend. Oh yes, you're a good friend. So I'm just taking my time. There we go. And then we'll bring everything to flexion by pushing up. We want this metatarsal region parallel with the spine. That way we know we're getting maximal flexion. And then we'll push on the knee. So you basically you push on the pointy things. The hock is pointy and the knee is basically pointy. Good. Now we'll pendulum forward and that's extending those tight hamstrings. So you want to sit with that for a minute. Good down, Bart. And then we'll pendulum back the other way. And that's extending the hip. Good boy, yes, and these things are tight too. His quadriceps is, is tight as well. Because these corgis spend a lot of time um, zooming around like bunny rabbits and uh, launching off their strong hind end. But a tight muscle is a weak muscle. So we really want these muscles to be nice and supple as part of maintaining their health through their life. There we go, so we're extending here. Good boy, and it's, it's tight for him. Good boy. No, uh, thank you. So, okay friend, we're doing well. You've done a really great job. We just have a little more to do. Good boy. So while I'm going to use this other hand to just encourage him down, and obviously I'm not forcing him because I, I wouldn't be able to do that with my arms crossed like this, I'm going to do some gentle massage in his quadriceps because that is what's making it difficult to stretch, to stretch those limbs backwards. Good boy. Getting some blood flow and releasing pain relievers and endorphins to get that stretch. This is this is basically a yoga class and this is Bart's first class. So he's doing fantastic. There we go. So if you do this with your dog, very shortly they'll learn to just lay down and what's going to happen. And the only negative effect is that you're going to become a little bit of a slave to your dog. But that's what we strive for. There we go. So this stretch is getting much, much better because we just gave those quadriceps a little bit of attention. There you go. And so we would do the whole thing on the other side. You can do passive range of motion whenever you want. It's up to you. Depending on your schedule, you can do one front leg one day, another front leg, um, all four limbs. Um, just the most important thing is to relax and have fun. Right, Barb? Thank you very much. <laughs>